Hey guys, this week's episode is Paper Hearts, a very molder centric episode dealing with Samantha. Really great villain, awesome overall structure, super intense action ending sequence, really, really good. So the episode starts out, it's nighttime, Mulder's waking up from a dream and he sees this red light sort of moving around his room. He follows it outside and it reads different sayings at certain points. It ends up leading him into the woods where he comes across this little girl who like appears dead on the ground and the red light turns into a heart and then she sinks into the ground. It's very aggressive, but it's a dream, bitch. Mulder wakes up from the dream for real this time and immediately goes to find like the place in the woods where this red light led him in his dream. Scully shows up and Mulder explains the dream thing. The forensics team ends up uncovering a skull. So even though this thing is all very psychic-y, dream, vision-esque, there is something going on. Turns out Mulder thinks he knows exactly who killed this little girl. And Mulder worked on the case when he was a criminal profiler. This guy has killed like 13 girls and he would always cut a heart out of their clothing so if this girl is one of those that would turn out that he's killed like 14 girls. Mulder and Scully kind of have a conversation about it and Scully kind of very uncharacteristically tells Mulder that maybe he's been solving this case unconsciously in his dreams all this time. I believe that you may have solved it in your sleep. So you think that I've somehow had this information about a 14th victim all the time and I've been processing it unconsciously. You said it yourself once. You said that a, a dream is an answer to a question we haven't learned how to ask. I think this is such an interesting line, but I also think it shows that like, you know, there are certain ways in which Mulder and the X-Files have rubbed off on Scully. So like, meh. Either way, they're both just so incredibly attractive in this conversation. Scully like checks out the body. She thinks she's identified this girl who went missing in Pennsylvania like way back in the 70s. Mulder thinks that doesn't really fit the timeline for Roach that would indicate that he was killing much earlier than Mulder suspected, but they decide to go talk with the girl's parents anyway. They have a conversation with the dead girl's father and as they're leaving Mulder's just like very brooding five o'clock shadow scruffy very attractive and as they're leaving he has like a dream flash and he sees John Lee Roach's car which was an El Camino so he's like Scully we gotta go check out his car like he could be hiding all of those fabric hearts there we have to find them and count them and see if there are 14 because that means that this girl could be part of that so they find his car. They literally just like cut open the upholstery like monsters, don't find anything. Mulder's like, oh my gosh, this guy had a camper shell. So they go and they find the camper shell and they cut open the camper shell. There's a copy of Alice in Wonderland inside and sure enough, tons of hearts. And they're flipping through the pages and they end up counting 16, which is way more than we thought. Mulder and Scully go to talk to John Lee Roach and he's like playing basketball in this prison. There is a very beautiful shot during this sequence that I just have to call out because it's so great and I love it. This guy says that if Mulder can shoot like a basket from this line, I don't know sports ball so I don't know what line it is, that he'll tell him what he needs to know and Mulder just like sinks it. Is that sports terminology? I don't know. And the guy's a total asshole and was like, oh were you really gonna trust a child molester? Ew. No. So Mulder's exhausted. He wakes up to see the red light again and follows it out of the office and all of a sudden he walks in to Samantha the night she disappeared. And his memory plays out as it always has, but this time John Lee Roach walks in and he takes Samantha. Mulder arranges a conversation with Roach in which he asks him like, where were you in November of 1973? Roach says that he was a vacuum salesman at the time. He was was in Martha's Vineyard and he sold a vacuum to Mulder's dad. Obviously this entire scene is alluding to the fact that Roach took Samantha or was in a position to be able to take her and Mulder basically just loses it and punches the guy. Man, hit me. I didn't see it. I did. I know I shouldn't be here for these sorts of things, but um, I am. Scully tells Mulder that Roach is basically just fucking with him. He was apparently on the internet at the prison like the day before. He could have Googled any of that stuff and is just using it to get under Mulder's skin. Scully, do you believe that my sister Samantha was abducted by aliens? 
literally her face. <laughs> Scully's reactions to certain things Mulder says is just always the highlight of an episode. But basically at this point, Mulder doesn't know what to believe and he's determined to find out. So he ends up going to his mother's house in Martha's Vineyard. He's like rummaging around in the basement and she comes downstairs and is like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't know why she isn't like, why are you in my house? Like, it's a whole thing. She's just like, oh, great to see you digging around in the basement. Like, what? Anyway, he ends up finding the vacuum cleaner that Roach says he sold his mom. And it's the same make and model, so it confirms his theory. And it's like, fuck, is this guy telling the truth? Of course, Skinner finds out that Mulder nailed Roach in the face and he's super pissed about it. And he tells Mulder to tread lightly and for Scully to make sure that he does. Mulder and Scully bring Roach two of the cloth hearts to see if he will like, you know, he's demanding to see them and maybe he'll tell them which one is which or where to find these girls. I, I, I think you know one of them already. Prove it. When she's just like not having any shit, I'm like, yes, bitch. Go. He tells Mulder to pick out which one he thinks is Samantha's. I mean, come on, it's a 50-50 chance. Either way, I'm giving you a victim. That one. You sure you want that one? The whole thing is super messed up and super mind tricky and not good at all. But Mulder picks one and he and Scully end up in the woods digging up another fucking dead body and just like disrupting a crime scene again. Like this is not the way things should be done. But the body does have a fabric heart cut out of it. So like, I guess he was telling the truth. Turns out the body is not Samantha. So Mulder and Scully end up back talking to Roach and he's like, if you guys let me out, I will directly lead you to her body, all of these things. But you know, obviously Mulder's really struggling with this because maybe it's exactly just what Roach wants, but he ends up caving because of course he does. Mulder checks him out of the prison and flies him out to like God knows where. And on the plane, he encounters this little girl and is super creepy with her and the whole thing is just like a big no. Skinner finds out that Mulder checked Roach out of prison and like flips a shit on Scully and blames her for the fact that like Mulder did this thing because of course we should blame the woman for the crime that the man did. You let me down. Let's clean up this mess before it gets completely out of hand. Totally makes sense. Mulder takes Roach to the house and basically lets him lead him through everything that happened the night that he took Samantha. Roach goes about telling him where everything was and how it all went down. But then Mulder's like, oh, ha ha ha, tricked you, bitch. I brought you to the wrong fucking house. You're a straight up liar. Roach like tries to backpedal and be like, oh, it was a long time ago. Like, yeah. Mulder's like, uh-uh, I know. You're just resisting me. And you're in the wrong house, you stupid son of a bitch. You were never here, you liar. He suggests that because he was able to get inside of Roach's head all those years ago that somehow they have a weird mental connection. Roach must have gotten into his dreams and his memories. <sighs> Sounds like an X-File. Of course, the next logical step in this episode would be that Roach manages to escape while Mulder has him in custody. Mulder just goes in his room and finds like, oh, he's gone. He's taken Mulder's badge and his gun, which is a big no-go. Mulder thinks that he's probably going after that little girl that he was weird to on the plane. So he calls the airline for the flight manifest and it turns out that like Fox Mulder has already called requesting the flight manifest. So yeah, Roach is already like three steps ahead of them and has already gotten the little girl. They bust in to where they think Roach might be holding her, but of course there's nobody there. And Mulder's like trying to figure out where she could be. And he sees that off in the distance, there's this like giant field of abandoned train cars. So he goes over there and he's walking around all the train cars and the sequence is like so beautifully shot like this is such an awesome cool location and the way that they built suspense throughout the scene is so great because when Mulder gets there he hears a scream but you know he can't like call out to her because you know she's with Roach like Roach obviously probably doesn't want to let on to where they are so Mulder's trying to like sneakily figure out like where they could be. He finally identifies the train car and like gets on and walks up to Roach and the little girl. Poor Mulder's like trying to distract her, trying to keep her occupied while he deals with Roach, but Roach has a gun on the little girl. Mulder's got his gun on Roach and then Scully and Skinner show up and they've got their guns drawn. It's a whole thing. Roach is like, you know, what if I know where Samantha is? Like, what if you kill me and I 
never get to tell you and he's still screwing with him mentally he's still just like you know is it really worth it like what if I can help you solve your greatest mystery all of these things and Mulder just shoots him in the head I think it's like a very strong move like Mulder's like no this guy's a liar he is fucking with me he has got to go down and he just takes him out back at the office Scully assures Mulder that the last heart does not belong to Samantha. She's like, it doesn't belong to her, Mulder. We will find that girl, but it's not her. And she tells him to go home and get some rest. And Mulder like smiles all silly and hugs her. And it's just, it's really cute. Why don't you go on home and get some sleep? It's a great ending to a great episode. And yeah, that's Paper Hearts. I really like this episode. It's a really great case file. I think that it's a really good peek into like Mulder's still constant journey trying to figure out what happened to Samantha, keeping that narrative alive. So we're all just really good. Thanks so much for watching. Go check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel. I'll be back next week with my favorite episode maybe ever.